Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1586 and is Brutal Iron Gym's 12th anniversary. So yes, I have been in business for 12 years, officially as Brutal Iron Gym. So I've been personal training clients since I was 18, so that's been 21 years. And I did that, uh, I grew up kind of in the middle of nowhere <laughs> in Pennsylvania, and personal training was not thought of as a career. And this was back, I graduated high school in 2002, so not like horribly long ago, but I, I was of the age where I got we got internet, I think, when I was like 17 at, at our house. And around 17, you were already supposed to be picking, you know, what you wanted to do for your career, what you were going to go to college for. And then I really kind of struggled to decide what I wanted to do because I was very passionate about exercise and fitness. But growing up in the middle of nowhere, like my graduating high school class was like 60-some people. Uh, and uh, so there was just not a lot of density in population. So personal training wasn't thought of as a career in my local area as much as it was thought of maybe as, you know, maybe something you could do as a hobby or side money. But everybody told you to go into, you know, teaching or go into, there's a lot of different fields, but it was more like the traditional, you know, main careers. There was not really anything side, like side career things. It was like the basic couple. That's it. So I always did personal training I guess, side money as I went to school uh, through college and tried to figure out what I wanted to do. And then when I went to grad school, I still did personal training, actually helped the university set up their personal training services at the university. So that was super fun, really enjoyed it. And when I was set to graduate with my master's in nutrition, I didn't want to do what that degree set me up to do. <laughs> so that degree, I felt like, and this is, you know, very exaggerated and, and short, but I felt like it taught you how to feed people, sick people at a hospital, or how to run, like, high school and elementary school, like, cafeterias. And that was, I was like, well, I don't want to do either one of those. Not that there's anything wrong with those jobs. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with it. You know, a little Seinfeld reference. But it wasn't what I was passionate about. I actually graduated uh, my grad degree with two of my teachers as clients because what I was passionate about was aesthetic nutrition, like how to eat to look a different way. And then of course, you know, how to train to look a different way and like sport performance, kind of all that stuff. And what was the trouble was that degree, the masters of nutrition, it didn't really have any classes. There was actually zero education about aesthetic nutrition, about the way you would eat to look a certain way. And that was sad. You know, I, I had to learn all of that on my own. And uh, like I said, I had two teachers as clients because they, they didn't know that. Like that wasn't something that was taught. We had one sport performance nutrition class, only three credits. And it was mostly based around aerobic uh, sports, not anaerobic, like lifting weights or explosive things. So that degree, it looks great on paper. I do know an enormous amount of foundation of science and knowledge about nutrition, but it didn't teach me nutrition in the way in which I wanted to use it. So towards the end of that degree, I was thinking to myself, you know, what do I want to do? I have a, I have a bachelor's, I have a teaching certification in health and phys ed, so I could do, go do that. I have a master's in nutrition now, but it didn't really prep me for the things I want to use. And I had been training a lot of people. I'd been making a lot of money. Uh, I was actually making more money uh, training people than I was doing like graduate assistantship and doing some other odds and ends. So I was like, well, maybe I should just do that. Maybe I can turn that into a career. So I went to a local gym and, and I said, hey, you know, would you, could you use me as a training director? And they were looking to replace their training director. I don't think their training director knew that, <laughs> but they were looking to replace their training director. We talked about everything and it was basically going to be, I had to go out and advertise the gym, advertise services, go get all the clients. And the gym was going to take 60% of everything money wise. And I'm like, well, damn, you know, you want me to go out and find your members, find the people who would do personal training, hire personal trainers, and you're going to do all of that and take 60. I'm going to do all of that and you're going to take 60% of my money. So I was like, well, I should just open my own place. <laughs> so uh, I made the classic mistake of if you love doing this thing, open a business. And then I was like, oh, damn, there's a lot more to it than just that thing. So I opened the gym and I absolutely loved it. However, it was also a nightmare <laughs> in the sense of the amount of effort it took. So when I first started, I knew I had to kind of build my name 
down in Rock Hill. So I still had clients I worked with in Pennsylvania. I had clients around the area, but not necessarily like a, you know, a full roster that would support a new business. So I had to build that clientele. One of the ways to build that clientele was I started training people for only $20 an hour. I'll let that sink in for a bit because that's actually stupidly cheap. <laughs> so I trained clients for $20 an hour. And it included that I would write their nutrition for them and actually check and talk about nutrition, teach them nutrition stuff. And I wrote their workouts for what to do on the times we didn't meet together. So it was everything you wanted if they would just train with me at least once a week. $20 an hour, I would do all your nutrition, all your training. It was stupidly cheap, but it worked. <laughs> so I opened the business actually on Valentine's Day in 2011, which is why today is the 12th anniversary. And it went well. So membership came up. A lot of clients started, like people started joining. And I very quickly, I think within like a month or two, it was less than 60 days, less than two months, I got up to doing a minimum of 50 hours of in-person training a week. If I had anybody miss a spot, I had a waiting list, I would just send people text messages and they would show up and it was great. So I could text somebody that morning and people would show up in the afternoon or later in the morning. But it was wonderful. So I was I was working at minimum of 50, up to about 60 hours of in-person training sessions a week. That was awesome because it brought in people. They would join the gym, you know, built like word of mouth. So it was really good. However, that was insanely stressful. Insane. I was still then had to clean the gym, had to do financial paperwork at the end of the day, had to write everybody's training and nutrition programs at the end of the day. So I was training 10 to 12 hours in person every day. And then had all of the work of the business after that. Then I tried to work out. And then overwhelmingly, most nights of the week, about four to five nights of the week, I wouldn't even bother driving home. I would just sleep on the floor of my office because I would finally get done with things at maybe 2 a.m. and I'd have to get back up at 6 to get ready to train the next person. And I'm like, ah, it's not even worth driving home. I'm just going to lay down and pass out my office. So I slept in my office more nights than I did in my apartment. And it worked, you know, it, it, it built the gym, it got things going, but I remember I had clients actually telling me to charge more. My clients were saying, you're not charging enough, and they knew that it was just not going to be sustainable. So I did it for a couple of years, you know, and, and it, it was working, but I was absolutely dying. Uh, like just destroyed, absolutely destroyed. I was so tired all the time. Felt miserable, horrible, like just ugh, lost so much weight. It was, it was ridiculous. Um, but it took me a while. You know, at first I was afraid to increase my price because I was afraid people would leave, you know, and then, you know, so if this is helping me pay the bills, you know, I was paying back an equipment loan. I was paying off a bunch of other stuff. So I really needed the money. And I was like, if I, if I up my prices and everybody leaves, I'll go out of business. But then I realized if I don't up my prices, I'm going to die. <laughs> Physically, literally die. So I increased my prices. I went from $20 an hour to $30 an hour. No one left. And I was like, okay, well, I'm making more money. That's great. But all, I, I'm still dying. I'm still like sleeping on the floor in the office. I'm still, you know, getting crushed here. So I, I upped it to $40 an hour and no one left. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> I just doubled my income, but... I'm still ridiculously worn out, exhausted, absolutely dead tired. And I was like, well, you know, I could increase price, but it seems like there's going to be something that has to come next. Like there has to be, there has to be some addition. There has to be some change. So I set boundaries and I limited my training to only eight hours a day. I brought in other trainers to help carry like the extra uh, weight load of clients. And I got my training hours down to, you know, about 40 hours a week. And I'd pick up an extra session here or there, but it was much more manageable. It was more sustainable. I finally got to take a little more care of myself, actually eat more than one or two meals a day. Uh, and it was the start of the business being more sustainable. So the first couple of years was just grinding away at anything and everything that paid the bills. Then as I got the equipment loan paid off, I got some other things financially set up. It was like, okay, I have a little more room to breathe. So I got down to just 40 hours a week of in-training. I still had to write everybody's programming. still had to do a bunch of other stuff, like clean the gym. So I was still working, you know, over 50 hours a week, but it wasn't the 70 hours a week anymore. You know, like the stupid, crazy stuff anymore. And by bringing in other trainers, it was starting to be kind of interesting because originally the reason why everybody came to the gym was because they were my client. That was very overwhelming, and it made it impossible for me to work out because people would ask me questions while I was trying to work out. 
And um, that's hence now why the first rule of the gym is do not bother me when I train. <laughs> so uh, I actually do have rules to the gym, which sounds, you know, possibly dorky and like, oh, geez, you know, you have to have rules. But I realize that it's just helpful for everyone to know uh, what the expectations are so everybody's on the same page. <laughs> uh, if you want to hear our rules list, it's podcast 1351. It's a Q&A podcast titled Brutal Iron Gym Rules. And it's actually really funny. So the first gym, like first rule is do not bother me while I'm training. Uh, you know, if, if the gym's on fire, don't tell me. I will notice. <laughs> you know, if the toilet paper's out of, I mean, if the if the bathroom's out of toilet paper, use your shirt, use your sock. I don't give a crap. I have, I, I, this is my time. This is my time to enjoy the gym. For the love of God, leave me alone. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So I bust my ass 23 hours of the day to make sure the gym is available for everyone else. I just wanted one hour to enjoy it for myself, you know. So that was starting to be, like, sustainable. But within a couple years, I started to realize, well, this has a limit. This has a cap, you know, to it. And I want to be able to help more people. So at that time, I had a little project going on where I was counting my helps uh, per day. And what that meant was is if I trained a client, that was one help. If somebody asked me a question, maybe a gym member asked me a question, and I answered it, that was one help. Maybe I got an email, so I answered it and helped somebody through the emails. So that was another help. So I wanted to help as many people as I could. And, you know, some days I'd get to the end of it, and it was only like 12, because this was before I had the podcast. So I was like, man, you know, I'm not. I'm not really getting to actually, like, I'm getting good quality of help. You know, I'm getting to help the 12 people I am helping. I'm helping them a lot, <laughs> but it's only 12. And I was like, I wonder, you know, what can I do to help more people? And I had got invited onto a podcast, actually. Uh, it was from uh, Barbells and Bacon, or Bacon and Barbells. I forget the, the exact name of the podcast. And they asked me to be on the podcast, and, and I loved it. It was super fun. I really enjoyed getting to talk about just anything and everything. So my favorite thing when I used to go do public speaking was Q&A. So when I would go places, I would often have something prepared to talk about uh, if I needed to like break the ice and get people to warm up to me. But really, I just wanted people to ask me anything they wanted. So that might sound terrifying, but to me, that was exciting. It was fun to have people ask questions because I'm like, this is what they want to know. Like, I want to know what they truly want to know. And then I want to help. Them. I want to help answer the questions. And I've been doing it long enough that I very rarely get surprised by any question. It does happen from time to time. Then I go research the hell out of it to make sure it never happens again. <laughs> uh, but um, I love Q&A. Like, I love, 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 love doing public speaking where I just randomly answer questions. It's my favorite thing. So that, like when I got invited on that podcast, I was like, this is really fun. Like I enjoy this. So I looked into how do you start a podcast? How do you start your own? You know, and so I, uh, that's the birth of Brutal Iron Gym. So I started doing the podcast and I realized, you know, once, once somebody downloaded it other than my mom, thank you, mom, <laughs> I love you and thank you. But <laughs> once it was somebody other than my mom downloaded it, I was like, oh, yay, you know, I'm helping somebody. Uh, and it kind of started growing and growing and growing. And now it's awesome. You know, like I, I really love doing the podcast. It reaches hundreds of people every single day. And it's just super fun. Really love it. And that started expanding the ways in which I could help people, the numbers of people I could help. That also kind of coincided with online training. So my first online client uh, that I kind of like remember being like a, a structured way of doing it where I was paying, like I was getting paid for the service. I was communicating with them weekly, you know, that kind of stuff uh, was a, a client out in California. It was a friend of one of the members of the gym. And this this person out in California wanted to compete in a, like an aesthetic competition, but they didn't feel confident with the coaches around them and, and what they would know. The member of our gym was like, dude, you really got to talk to this this guy, Rob, he, you know, he'll really help you. So I helped the client out in California. She did great. We ended up getting a pro card. Pretty awesome. Um, and that was kind of the birth of online coaching. So I started coaching people online and I started the podcast. And that was kind of the, the second phase of Brutal Iron Gym. And it was just amazing. And I'm still loving it. It's still growing. It's still expanding. And this is just such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful um, blessing to be able to do business in this way. So I have clients all over the United States, from Florida up to New York, out to California, Texas, like um, 
uh, the state of Washington, people, uh, gosh, Ohio, ten, like Tennessee. One of my clients just moved to Tennessee, like just everywhere. So the podcast has been downloaded in all 50 states in the United States. I have clients all over the place, and it actually opened me up to coaching clients in other countries. So I have clients in, uh, I had a client in Austria, I have client, clients now in uh, Australia, Canada, a client Costa Rica, a client now in France, uh, Mexico, New Zealand, Spain, Sweden, the UK. <laughs> um, so it's been really super exciting and fun to now be working with people kind of all over the world. And the podcast has now been downloaded over 100 countries. I didn't even know there were 100 countries. <laughs> so it's been fun. My wife and I actually counted up to say, like, we Googled, like, how many countries there are. Uh, so it was fun to to get the expansion to work with people one-on-one in so many places around the world, but then also to have the podcast start reaching places, you know, around the world. And that's been just an immeasurable, uh, immeasurable blessing to be able to reach more people, have that help number every day be much higher. And I'm just feeling more excited in the sense that I feel like I'm better fulfilling my purpose on, on this world, you know, my purpose in life, like what I get up for to do every day. I feel like I'm doing better and better. And I'm still so excited. I'm 12 years into this and I feel like I'm still brand new and like, I still haven't found, you know, the best way to do it yet. It just, I'm so passionate, so excited, so blessed. And I really love the place that the business is in now is I'm getting to work with people in person, getting to work with people online and getting to work with people all over the world. And it's just absolutely amazing. And I am just beyond blessed. And one of the things I started doing recently, so it's not like a commercial, but I don't care. I want to say it anyhow, <laughs> is uh, our live monthly programming service. My wife, whenever we met back in 2019, she very quickly saw like kind of what I was doing in business. And she said, why don't you do monthly programming? And that, in a sense, like a very summarized version of it is, is where you write programs based on a goal, not on a person. So if I talk to, you know, John Doe and John Doe tells me he wants to lose 40 pounds of fat and maybe do a bodybuilding show in the future. I wrote everything for John Doe and she said, well, you can help more people if you just do monthly programming, like write a program for people wanting to do bodybuilding. And then whoever wants to do that can do the programming. And at the time I was kind of, I I was uncertain how to do it and do it well. And what I mean by that was most online programming that you see now is absolute garbage. It's, trash and it's because the person has you know a million people that they can that that are going to buy their programming they just write anything they can write in like 10 minutes it's not that great of quality there's no one-on-one aspect to it like i've had members of our gym like i don't train every single person that comes in our gym so they'll come to me and they're like hey this program says to do like plyometric jumps but i just had like knee surgery should i be doing that i'm like no what the hell (laughs) don't do that and that would be like that actually example was written by like if somebody was getting a coach to write them one-on-one programming and they told that coach that they just had knee surgery and the coach still wrote in plyometric jumping. So it means that that coach just sent them the same bullshit program that they sent everybody else, but charged them for one-on-one aspects. Like the aspects you would see of like bulk programming is somebody might like they're doing a program where for power of things, say for example. So they're supposed to be squatting three times a week, uh, benching three times a week and deadlifting twice a week. And it's like, yeah, but that's, absolutely insane volume and for most people that's not going to work well overwhelmingly most people that that program is not going to work well so this person would be struggling they have a lot of joint pain they're struggling to try to fit the you know two two and a half hour workouts into the gym you know into their schedule and they're just like asking me what to do and i'm like well this is horrible this is absolutely crap programming so i was very jaded to the idea of monthly programming and i come at my job Uh, as, you know, kind of a type A personality and perfectionist, what's the best I could possibly do? So I saw monthly programming as it's, I can't do it best for each individual, so I don't want to do it. But my wife, you know, continued to work on me and she's brilliant business mind, brilliant. And um, so actually she just got into doing an executive MBA at Kellogg, which is I think number two in the in the world of like executive MBA programs. Actually, I think it might be number one of executive MBA programs, but number two in overall MBA programs. So super excited for her. She's smart, uh, very smart. So she was, her and I were talking through it, and I said, well, one of the things that I don't like about monthly programming is people don't get one-on-one attention. I was like, what I what I found that people want the most 
is they want to be able to ask their questions. They want to get confirmation about what they're doing and whether it's right. And we started talking and I was realizing, you know, I'm doing one-on-one -on -one access information for my one-on-one -on -one clients. I said, why don't I just extend that as an offer to anybody doing the monthly programming? So they'll get a brand new program every four weeks based on whatever their goal is. Right now I have it limited at five, so I can do each of the five programs perfect. Very happy with the quality of them. Very happy. So I'm going to like, I'm going to do them perfectly. And then I do a live uh, virtual Q and a every week. You can join that. Ask me any question you want. I'll answer it. Every member uh, of the, every subscriber, whatever you want to call yourself, uh, of the live monthly programming service, they get access to a Google doc 24 seven. You can write in any question you want and I'll answer it every single week. And I'm going to do that for as long as I can possibly handle it uh, as those documents grow. But I was like, that's what I want to do is I can, I can do live monthly programming, meaning it's live in the sense that you can talk to me every single week virtually, you can talk to me in that document, and I'm going to send educational videos, and it's live in the sense that every single month every program is brand new, it's the best knowledge I possibly have, so I'm not writing a program now than just selling it over the next three to five years. As I learn anything new, it shows up in the programming. Every single month is the brand new best knowledge that I have, and I'm like, oh, I love this idea. You know, so it's a way for me to be able to help even more people because it's a lower cost and I can bring on more people. So my one on one clients, I, I do charge more because it is more like time consuming and I have to have a limit on it. You know, I, I learned long ago I can't help everybody who wants help. Uh, I can't help them well and I can't help them to a meaningful extent. So I was getting, you know, a mile wide but an inch deep. I wasn't going deep into the process, uh, aspect of helping people. So I just start putting a limit on the number of one-on-one -on -one people I worked with. So I put the cap on that um, and I was like, well, crap. I also then don't have an alternative for people if they don't get the one-on-one -on -one coaching. If I don't have space available for them, I don't have anything to give them otherwise. So the live monthly programming was also another option for people when they reach out for one-on-one -on -one coaching but I'm, I'm full this is a way in which I can have them still get really good quality information and they can still get that one-on-one -on -one aspect of education and getting to ask questions. So I love that and that's kind of the next phase. So the first phase of Brutal Iron Gym was me killing myself, working 70 hours a week for $20 an hour. Uh, and then the second phase brought in online coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching in the podcast. And now I'm excited for kind of the third phase, which is the live monthly programming. I think that's really can build a, a community and culture where people can get the one-on-one -on -one attention, but at a lower cost. So it's only $50 a month and you get brand new programs every four weeks. Every single exercise has a tutorial video with it. You can ask me any question you want 24 seven. I mean, it's pretty, pretty badass. I, I'm very happy with this and it has taken me three years to figure out how to do this to a point that I'm actually happy with. <laughs> so I'm going to always be my own worst critic on the quality of work that I do, but that's a good thing. So I'm very excited about it. And I thank everybody who has participated in Brutal Iron Gym in some way. You know, thank you very much to my parents uh, who believed in me to help me start this business. And thank you uh, to my brother who came down one time, helped paint the gym, then came back. <laughs> so I think we worked him to the bone, and then he's just like, I'm never doing that again. But I, I do appreciate his support, my parents' support. And now my wife, Meredith, thank you very much. I love you. Uh, you know, she's my soulmate, and she's definitely the yin to my yang. So she fills in all the gaps that I, I have. And I'm very blessed, and thank you, God, of course, uh, for sending her down. Of course I should thank God first, but I thank him every day for everything. <laughs> so uh, he knows he's thanked. And then thank you to all my clients who started the gym with me, my, my uh, friend Tommy, my friend Paul, you know, started helping training uh, people with me, Jonathan, Nama. I mean, I'm going to continue to go on and on. Uh, but there's been a lot of people that have helped. And I'm truly, truly blessed. I'm excited for kind of the next 12 years. You know, it's, it's amazing to think 12 years in, started this when I was 27, so I'm 39 now. And 12 years has absolutely flown by. That is scary as hell. Absolutely scary how fast 12 years goes. Uh, but I'm very blessed and I'm grateful for the 12 years that has been. And I am uh, beyond words excited about the next 12 years. I really love uh, what I do and I'm blessed to wake up every morning fired up and excited to do it. I stay up and avoid sleep because I want to do more and help people more. So I'm very lucky, very blessed and 
I appreciate everybody who listened to this podcast. It was just me rambling, basically. But I, I am just so, so thankful. And I appreciate everyone. And I hope that through this podcast, people take advantage of the aspect of just being able to ask anything they want for free. You know, I know people struggle a lot. People struggle with nutrition, how to do it that fits their lifestyle, how to fit their needs, how to actually reach their goals. People struggle with training to, for the same reasons. People struggle to live a healthy life. And there's almost too much. There, it's not almost. There literally is too much information in the world to make sense of it now. You know, when I started, there wasn't even Internet, so I got to read two magazines every 30 days. <laughs> so there was insufficient knowledge, not anywhere near enough knowledge. And now I'm at a point where there's too much knowledge. But I hope that if you're listening to this podcast, you believe in my knowledge and, and in the advice that I will give you. You know, it's worked for 3,000 clients, plus I've helped people earn pro cards, elite totals, I've helped Olympic athletes, professional athletes. I mean, whatever the goal is, you name it. You can look at the list of people I've helped on our website. I actually have it on the homepage, which seems like bragging, uh, but I didn't even think about that till somebody pointed out to me the other day. But the point was is just to let people know that they can get help. So, like, the categories of people I've helped were aesthetic sports, like, you know, bikini wellness figure men's physique class physique bodybuilding we've done athlete rehab i've helped uh like college high school athletes get college scholarships uh in multiple uh, division one sports crossfit games athletes and coaches i've helped dancers which is really fun and exciting a bunch of endurance athletes like ironmans marathons uh, i've helped people with medication reduction arthritis cholesterol and all that uh, military prep done a lot of tactical operations and kind of general fitness for military help people with models modeling and uh, that was really fun male and female models i've helped musicians with posture with finger strength a uh, nutrition therapy for celiac disease diabetes uh, hashimoto's a bunch of other stuff I've helped olympic athletes in multiple sports powerlifters earn elite totals and top 50 uh, records pregnancy people get ready for pregnancy people getting you know kind of rehabbed after pregnancy professional athletes in multiple sports i uh, helped a person won win the firefighting world challenge uh, for the last two years. There's a world champion, so that's super exciting and fun. I've helped people with special needs a bunch when I was in my undergrad, graduate, and can still now. And then strawman competitors and a bunch more. So I've been very blessed to get to do a lot of variety of things and help a lot of people. And I know that people struggle. And I want you to always feel welcomed to send in any questions at all to this podcast. It's totally free for you absolutely free to get anything you want any question you want answered and i love 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 that i wish this is what i had you know when i was younger and i'm blessed to be in a position now where i can give that back to somebody else you know same thing with uh, live monthly programming i would have loved to have had that when i was younger you know i would download uh, bodybuilding videos and try to mimic what they were doing it would have been amazing to have a bodybuilder just send me videos <laughs> uh, you know send me workouts every month that would have been awesome so i am grateful and blessed and thankful to be in a position where I can give back to people the things that I wish I had. So if you ever need anything, if you ever want anything, please always reach out. Our email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. And I just appreciate you very much. I thank you very much for listening to this podcast and uh, trusting in me, investing in me. And it's just absolutely, absolutely a blessing. So thank you very much. Cool. Okay. Well, Happy 12th anniversary to Brutal Iron Jim and everybody involved. Uh, pretty awesome. And we'll look forward to the next 12 years. <laughs> so if you do have any questions, feedback, suggestions, anything you want to know, let us know at our email, brutalironjim at gmail.com. If you like today's podcast, please share it. And when you share it, let people know that we do answer questions for free. They can just send in an email, and then I'll answer their question for free in a podcast. And then thank you to those who donate to support the podcast. That way you can actually do that. <laughs> so that way it helps cover some of the hosting costs and all the craziness that's involved. But I do appreciate the donations. They make enormous difference. If you do want to donate, you can do so on our website, www.brutalironjim.com. Even just $5 a month, you know, even a small amount can go a long way over all the people. So thank you very much, and I'm very grateful to those who do that. Also, if you like the information we share in our podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels. On Instagram, I post every single day, and on YouTube, a lot more than I used to. <laughs> so find us and follow us under the name Brutal Iron Gym. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.